Hello, my name is Ammar Mango, and I'm the founder of Case in Point. I would like to tell you about what we have at Case in Point that can help you and help your team boost performance. What can motivate my team to achieve company goals? This is a question always executives ask, and they ask of me as a consultant. How can you help us motivate the team? How can you help us improve performance of our team members? To do that, it's important first to understand your team, to understand what motivates them to work, to achieve results, and how best to communicate with them. All this can be answered through people analytics. In many organizations, when we develop a training plan in an organization, what are the basis for developing this training plan? How do we develop it based on what input? We need a structured approach to help us determine what are the items that we need to what are the components of our training plan? What competencies we need to build for our team? People analytics help you do that in a structured and effective manner and help you customize the training plan to the specific needs of your teams. So what is people analytics? People analytics or talent analytics. The way we do it at Case in Point, we try to do it in a practical and simple and fast manner so you can get results real quickly. This is how we do it. Let's take a look at the slides together. First of all, we, we start with a 20 minute assessment that's sent through a link by email to every participant. So after the assessment is done, we get a report that shows us the performance DNA of the person who, to who took the assessment. The performance DNA shows you the performance style of the person. How do they deal with problems? How do they deal with people? How they, deal with, how they deal with change, and how they deal with rules and regulations. From this drawing, we can tell a lot about the person, including what are the strengths, what are the challenges, what are the areas they need to adapt to be able to do a better job, how they learn, what motivates them, how to manage them, how to communicate with them, how not to communicate with them. We can also tell what motivates them, what are the ambitions they have, how can they be motivated? How, what to focus on? What are the things that they do not like to work on? From that, you get a wealth of information about how to communicate and about how to get the best results from the team member while they are happy and fulfilled. Things don't stop here. We go beyond the individual assessment results and we look at the results at the organizational level. And this is where the people analytics comes in. Let's take a look at what the results of an organization look like. For an organization, we put the results on the four dimensions, just like we do for the individuals, but instead of looking at the results of one individual, we look at the results for the whole organization. If you take a look at this drawing, you see the results from multiple assessment takers, all in the same organization or department. There's a lot you can tell about an organization from this diagram. Each dot represents a person who took this assessment. So from this diagram, I can tell you a lot about this, this department. One thing I can tell you is that these are a group of commanders. They love to deal with problems directly, decisively. So they will want to confront problems, deal with them quickly, and that is good. And there are, like everything else, there are things that we need to watch out for in this kind of style. Notice on the collaborative side, we don't have many of the managers from this organization or the assessment takers on the collaboration side. Now, people who are collaborative might be slower in taking decisions and making decisions, but when they make a decision, they ensure it is a quality one. So we might have a group of people here who are fast to take a decision, but they might not study everything that needs to be studied before taking the decision, and they might not consult the people around them. What else I can tell you about this organization? Just from this drawing, I can tell you that probably these managers are not really best at collaborating with their teams. Now, this, this brings in a whole lot of other things that we need to pay attention to. One of them is don't expect much succession planning to happen in this organization on its own. So if things are left to themselves, not much succession planning will happen. So people need to make a conscious effort to build the second line, to mentor other people. And this is what we recommend for an organization like this, to pay attention and put procedures and training to help people become better mentors.
Also, there needs to be training on collaboration to ensure that you bring in the whole team to the table, get their input. There will be a challenge in this organization if things are left to their nature that managers will not be asking questions, soliciting feedback from others. Probably they will rush into making decisions based on what they feel is the right thing to do. So in an organization like this, I usually give training related to collaboration to managers. It can be only a one-day workshop because we can focus on the subject. And we talk about things about, uh, we talk about things like focusing on listening to the other's opinion. Like asking, what do you guys think? What do you think the next step should be? Better listening skills, asking, saying, hmm, interesting. If somebody says something, instead of rushing to judge what others are saying, by saying, you know, interesting, this sounds interesting, please tell me more. When somebody says a point, even if I disagree with it, to say valid point, I want to hear more. These are small refinements, but they make a big difference in the organization. I can tell you more about this organization. I can tell you that they are more on the introverted side. There are a couple of people who are on the extroverted side, but not that many. Most of them, the vast majority is on the objective side. You expect that from technical organizations. But if this organization is interested in becoming part of the society, in becoming more involved in social activities, networking with other organizations and the community, then probably they need to work more on their outgoing abilities. One of the things that I focus on for building these abilities is to learn how to socialize, how to communicate, how to start a conversation, how to break the ice, and more importantly, what I call the art of telling a story. This is very important to build outgoing skills. I will not continue with more. These are just examples of what we can find from these dimensions. The routine versus rapid dimension tells you how much an organization is ready for change and willing to deal with change. Or is it an organization that prefers stability and deals with change only on as needed basis? When we look at that, plus the type of industry this organization is in, we can tell a lot about what is happening in the organization and what needs to change to improve their ability to deal with change. And on the last axis, which is exacting versus easygoing, uh, this tells you about how people deal with rules and regulations and procedures. If you notice here, there is an inclination towards being exacting. And again, I see this in technical organizations. The interesting thing is that clients prefer easygoing behavior in the early stages of the project because they want the supplier and the supplier team or the consulting team to focus more on the business needs of the client. Usually exacting people focus too much on the features and, fo and focus too much on what they are offering versus focusing on what the client needs. So we usually give training related to that if we see lots of exacting. To the other side, if we see a, a group that is easygoing, while this is great in the early stages, it might not be good towards the completion of the project or at closing, because at the detail level, the team members will not be delivering the results that are um, complete or uh, bug-free. So from this drawing in general, there's a lot that can be concluded from here. Another drawing that we look at is the motivations of the teams. You can see in this organization, people are very creative, which has its advantages and disadvantages. People are very competitive, same things, they have advantages and disadvantages, but people are not individualistic. Sometimes you find a whole culture. If you are in a region that is not individualistic, you find the culture also affects the results of the organization. And this group is not very theoretical. There's a lot we can deduce from this. And it helps organizations look at how to better implement their strat strategy, how to align their teams, how to train their teams. Lots of things come from this, including training and development plans, succession plans, coaching for the executives. Another thing that we can do from here, we can also predict performance in certain roles. We can also help with recruitment. How does that happen? Usually we go in, to give you an example, one of the organizations we helped, they have 
around 70 or 75 uh, salespeople for a certain area. And um, they wanted to know if, they, if we can give them insights into hiring and also into building the competencies of the people they hire as salespeople. So what we did, we did the assessment for the 75 salespersons and we asked them to highlight the ones that they are happy with their performance or the top performers in the organization. From that, we were able to see patterns. Let's take a look at the slide. We were able to see a couple of patterns uh, related to different types of sales. For example, we have, if we have here, if we take a look at the uh, blue points, these show you the benchmark for a certain type of salesperson, while the purple marks show you a benchmark for the top performers in, other, in another type of sales position. So from this, what happens is that we can compare this to anyone in the team and find out what are the training needs for that person. Also, when we recruit, if we wanted someone as close as possible to the top performers, we can also predict their performance and how well they will do and what needs to change in order to give the top performer type of performance. These are only some of the things we do with people analytics. There is a lot more that we can do with artificial intelligence and uh, predictive analytics that allow, you, allow us to predict lots of things about the team, about the performance of the organization. If you have any questions about this and you are interested to know more, please contact us at info at